Up until this point, apart from an automated scan by OWASP's app, we've been performing SQL injections by hand. And in this lesson, we take a look at an automated tool called SQL Map. Let's take a break from the OWASP juice shop for a bit, and let's switch it up. Let's pull up the damn vulnerable web application. While that's happening, we'll also start a new OWASP Zap session so that we can have a clean workspace. Once that's done, we can go to Quick Start, and then we'll do manual exploration, but this time we'll remove the port 3000 since the DVWA is just on port 80. Also, in this case, I'll actually disable the HUD so that we just use the OWASP Zap desktop client. And then I'll go ahead and launch the browser. We can log in with, I believe it's admin admin, if not admin password. Okay, admin admin worked, great. Let's go down and create slash reset the database. And then we'll go ahead and log back in. And this time I believe it is admin password. Okay, yep, that worked. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll change the security level from low to medium, just to make it a little bit harder. Then I'll go over to SQL injection, the blind version. Now I'll go back to Wasp Zap and I'll click on the history tab so we can see what's going on, just like we could with the history in the OWASP Zap HUD. I'll go back to the browser, and then I'll make sure user ID of one is selected, but doesn't really matter, it could be any ID, and then I'll click on submit. Now we get this message back, and then we can see that there was a get and post request, and we can open up what that request looks like. We have data with ID of one and submit equals submit. We have a post request, with this endpoint here. We have user agent, some other HTTP headers, and then we have cookie information with PHP session, security equals medium, and I think that's all we'll need for our attack. So at this point, we're ready to pull up our tool, SQL Map. We can click on the Kali Linux icon, search for SQL Map, and pull that up. Now, I won't go through each setting and option since they are fairly well documented, and I'll show you how to find that towards the end of this lesson, but there are a few options that I want to mention because we will need to use them. Of course, we'll need to be able to submit a target URL, so we can do dash URL, or dash U, I mean, and then dash dash URL equals URL. So those two options are valid. We'll need to be able to submit data, and this is the data string to be sent through the post request, such as an ID number, for example, which is what we'll use in this case but it doesn't have to be an ID number. We'll also need to input cookie information, and I've just pulled that up through that post request, so we can see that we have a PHP session ID, and this is what SQL Map will use to authenticate its requests on our behalf. We can also use the dash P option, which is the testable parameter. So in this case, again, it would be the ID parameter. There are a couple of detection options where you can specify a level of tests to be performed, and the risk level as well. Again, this is fairly well documented, so I won't go into too much depth, but I'll show you how to find this information if you are curious. And then there are options that can be used to enumerate the backend database system, structure and data. And I don't see it listed here, by the way, but we will use one that is dash dash DBS, which enumerates the DBMS databases. So keep in mind that these are not the only options you have access to. This help menu here does shorten down the list of options, so there are more that you can find in the documentation. So, okay, let's go ahead and formulate our attack and payload. I'll start with SQL map dash U for URL, and then I'll paste the URL from our request. Then we'll put in our cookies. Again, this is something I can copy from here. I'll want to put in my data, which is going to have the ID submitted and submit equals submit. And then we'll want to specify the parameter that we want to try and attack, which is the ID parameter. And then again, like I said, the last option we'll put in is dash dash DBS in order to, to tell SQL map that we want it to enumerate the database management system databases so that we can see what's going on. I'll go ahead and press enter now. Now, as this happens, sometimes we'll get different prompts, which is SQL map asking us how we want to proceed. There are defaults, and next time I'll show you how to skip these steps so that it just goes with the defaults. But for now, I'll go ahead and say yes, because in this case, it seems to have found out that the DBMS 
is likely to be MySQL, so it will help it narrow down the types of attacks that it will perform. Again, I'll say yes to this. And now we can see via the verbose information what kinds of attacks are happening. And as we can see, there are stacked attacks, time-based attacks, error-based attacks, and others. Now it asks us if we want to try to find proper union column types with fuzzy test, and we'll say yes. But it tells us that the injection is not exploitable with null values, so do we want to try a random integer value for the option? We'll say yes. Again, yes. So it has found out that the ID parameter is vulnerable. So it's asking us if we want to keep trying to test other parameters, and since we don't have any others that we want to test, we'll just go ahead and say no. And now it's retrieving the information, and it's found out that there are two databases. There's a DVWA database and the information schema, which we're already very familiar with. Okay, so we found a vulnerable input, and we've got two database names. Now let's go ahead and explore the DVWA database. So we can replay the same command that we did previously, but this time, instead of running dash dash DBS, we will want to extract the table names with dash dash tables. But since we really only care about the DVWA database, I'll do dash D DVWA to limit our results. And instead of having to answer every single prompt like we did last time, which can be annoying, I'll do dash dash batch, which will automatically go with the defaults. Also, to speed things up a little bit, I'll increase the number of threads to five. Let's go ahead and press enter and see what happens. Okay, that was really fast. So in the DVWA database, there are two tables. We've got a guest book table and we've got a users table. So let's go ahead and extract information from that users table. And we can replace the dash D option from our prior command to instead be dash T for table and then specify the table name of users. We'll remove the dash dash tables. We'll keep batch and threads. But the last thing I'll add is dash dash dump so that it shows us what information is in that table. Now at this point, not only did it extract all the information from the users table, but the default options also attempted to crack the passwords, as we can see up here. And since they were easy passwords and MD5 hashes, it cracked them in very little time. This maybe took a couple of minutes in total. So now the output contains the MD5 hash, but it also contains the actual cracked passwords. So already you can start to see the amount of data that we can extract in a very short amount of time using a tool like SQL Map because doing this manually, while still very possible, would have taken much, much longer. And it's able to do this because under the hood, SQL Map automatically identifies vulnerable parameters. It identifies which SQL injection techniques can be used to exploit those vulnerable parameters by trying various techniques for different database management systems, unless it already knows what the DBMS is running, in which case it can drastically reduce the number of techniques to try. It also fingerprints the backend DBMS, like we talked about, so that it can gather as much information as it can, again, helping narrow down attacks. And depending on how vulnerable the application is, and also what options you choose, SQL Map can automatically enumerate data or take over database servers as a whole. For example, if you're curious and interested, there are ways of using SQL Map to take control of the underlying operating system. And at this point, I'm not actually sure if that's possible on the damn vulnerable web application. But like I said, if you're curious, definitely something to look into. Oh, and one more thing, SQL Map uses the same techniques that we've already learned about. But if you're really curious to learn more about it, definitely check out its GitHub as well as its documentation. And that concludes it for our attacks with SQL Map. You may now complete this lesson and move on to the next.